Here I am in Creole Parametric and I'm about to open up the master rep of a very complicated assembly and it's going to generate a ton of warnings and statements in the message area and I'm just going to show some of that to you. So we've got the assembly, let me choose open representation to make sure I get the master representation so I get the maximum amount of feedback in the message area. And already you can see a bunch of comments coming in there and I'm going to come back after this is done retrieving and regenerating to show you how you can see what all those different messages are. Retrieval of the master rep has completed and I know there are a lot of different warnings that came across in the message area, but if I scroll up here, it only has a limited number of lines available to me. And obviously there are th some things that I should go back into the model and correct. So if I wanna see what those different warnings are, I can go to the tools tab and then choose message log. And here we have all the different messages that came across through there during my session. And as I scroll through here, I see some different you know, warnings in here. Oh, maybe I need to go into this assembly and see what those constraint relations are. And oh, here's some section that doesn't exist. Something about part bend tables. So this allows me to see what different things I should probably address in the different components in this assembly in order to improve its regeneration. And when you have this message log in this window, you can go to the file drop down menu and you save as to save this out to a text file if you want to evaluate it that way instead. I've been using Creole Parametric and Pro Engineer for two decades now, and I'm still finding functionality that makes my life easier. Lately, I've been working in a lot of models with a lot of parameters that are used for modeling or relations, or maybe they're bringing them in from notebooks. And what I find is sometimes I'll open up the parameters dialog box, and there will just be a bunch of different parameters in here that make it difficult for me to find what I'm working on. And just today, I realized that there's a filter here in the parameters dialog box that you can customize. So for example, I've got a bunch of different parameters for the old PDM days, and here we have some from relations, and here we have some modeling ones that you can actually change, and some more locked ones that come over from Windchill. So what would really help me is if I only saw the ones that were related to modeling and the ones that I could actually change. So let's create some filters. I will click on the customize button and there are a few default filters but they're not really useful to me so I will click the new button and I'm going to create one that is going to have for the source either user defined or relation so let's choose our column and this is going to be source and going to choose from here, somewhere in here is going to be user defined. There it is. And let's add that. And I'm going to use the or rule so to say that I also want source as relation. And there it is right below user defined. Let's add that. And I am going to right click on the saved filter and choose rename. I'm going to call this modeling and then click OK. And now when I go to this filter drop down list, oops, looks like I didn't rename it. Rename modeling. Now when I go to my drop down list, I have modeling in here and it reduces the number of parameters so I don't see any of those ones related to windchill or PDM. And again, the ones that deal with relations, I can't change those, they're locked. So maybe I only want the user defined parameters. Let's create a, another filter and click the new button and I can rename it. And I'm going to just call these user for lack of originality. And I am going to look for things where the source is going to be not windchill. I want them to be just my user defined ones. 
and click the Add button and then OK. And so now when I go to the drop down list, I can choose User. And there we have just the ones that I am capable of changing. So in that way, I'm able to get to the list of parameters that I want to use rather than using the whole long list of every possible parameter that varies by source. And just to show you in here, there's a lot that you can choose in terms of the column that you want. So for example, if you just want designated parameters, uh, you can also choose ones that are based on the access, for example, or access in here somewhere. There it is, access full, limited, or locked. And again, full means that those are ones that the users are capable of changing. So take advantage of this. Please use it. Great functionality. Back in the day before Dropboxes and file sharing, it was sometimes very difficult to share large models with other people uh, because also back then there used to be very stringent restrictions on the file size that you could attach to emails. So there was this old trick that would sometimes help out and it's basically selecting a feature in your model after your default datums, then going to insert mode, which is essentially going to supp suppress all the features after that, and then saving the file out. So I'm going to do file save as, save a backup, and let's go to this subfolder and click OK. And I'm going to do that a couple more times with other files. Let's grab this one. Again, relatively complicated. Insert here after the default datums. Then let's do a backup. And one last time. Insert here. Save a backup. And then click OK. And so we've saved those different files. Let's see if we actually got any savings in terms of file size. All right, over on the left, we have the original models. Over on the right, we have the ones that I just saved. So we see in the first case, we went from 22 meg down to just under 2 meg. Then we have 25 going down to about 4. And we have 21 going down to about 2 again. So we're seeing some pretty significant savings in these situations by a factor of 6 to over 10 in some of these cases here. So just a little trick to keep in your back pocket in case you ever need to save a really big file and send it in an email and it's just too big past your company's limitations. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.